I want to start off with a question. If you guys all had a time machine and you could go forward to next Friday and you could know what the lotto numbers are, the winning lotto numbers are for the jackpot, how many of you would stop everything you're doing and run to that time machine, run and go get that lotto ticket? One hand up if, if you would do that. Hand up, all of you. Keep it up. And I'm really excited because that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be talking about the present and future of marketing. And what we're going to be talking about is what's going to be happening in the future with marketing. And because you're part of CEO Warrior, give you guys that one-year, two-year advantage where you're so many steps ahead of the competition that you've got that winning lotto ticket, that you've got the ability to take those actions in advance and pre-position yourself for the win. So the next question is, how many of you guys are willing to play all out with me for the next 90 minutes to really engage and, and, and take that action? Two hands up, two hands up, boom, let's do it. So I really want to do two things. I want to make this session, I want to, I want to make it interactive because you guys have been sitting here for the last couple of days, right? It's late in the afternoon. Um, I'm not going to stand up in here and talk for 90 minutes, right? I'm going to be giving you guys exercises. I'm going to be having you guys work at your tables. I'm going to ask you guys to roll up your sleeves and do some work so that it's not boring, so it's interactive. Give me a yes, like kind of nod your head if that's okay. Yeah? The other thing is I want to make it practical. Like a session about the future of marketing sounds interesting, but it can also be very academic, right? It can be, can be very like, eh, all right, that's, you know, that's interesting information. I want to make this practical so that you can leave today's session very clear on what the future is, what's happening right now, and the things you can put in place in your business to double and triple your sales. So is it okay if we make it practical and we make it interactive? One more time, two hands up. Yeah. Yes, let's do this. So here's, here's what we're going to be covering. On today's session, I'm going to talk about the biggest changes and shifts that are happening in the marketing landscape and what you need to be aware of to be on the cutting edge. Um, I'm gonna unpack what I call the accelerated growth model. The things that you need to be thinking about in order to really accelerate your growth. Um, the seven marketing challenge channels that you must be tapping into to maximize your lead flow. Um, five lead conversion leaks that are slowing your growth really killing your ROI, and what you can do to position yourself as the best known contractor in your market. Um, real quick, who I am and why you should listen. Um, again, I'm the author of How to Triple Your Sales by Getting Your Internet Marketing Right. If you guys all have a copy, grab it and hold it up for one sec. Read this. It's not based on theory. It's based on real world case studies of home service companies that have done just that. But I'd say more important than any of that stuff, is that at this point, I had the opportunity to work with hundreds of plumbing, HVAC, and home service companies in some of the most competitive markets across the country and help them go from you know, obscurity in their market to the point where they're now the dominant players in their areas. Many of them going from you know, millions in revenue to tens of millions of dollars in revenue. So what I'm gonna be talking about, what I'm gonna be sharing isn't based on theory. It's not based on a blog post that I read somewhere. It's based on real world, outcomes for companies just like yours. And you know, I'm on a mission right now to help 1,000 plumbing and HVAC companies triple their sales by getting their internet marketing right. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm sharing this information. We've got a, an agency that does this stuff. And so if at some point you'd like to chat, obviously we're new partners in the program. We'd love the opportunity to talk about how we might be able to help you take your online marketing to the next level. So let's spend a couple minutes on why, as we get into this. Why is this even important? Well, first of all, your marketing will make or break your business, right? I don't have to tell you guys that. You can have the best technicians in the world. You can have the best equipment in the world. You can have the best CSRs in the world. But the reality is if your phone's not ringing, if you're not the known contractor in your market, none of that matters, right? Your marketing will make or break your business. The other reason I think it's important is that you guys make a major investment in marketing, right? Over the years, historically, you've spent tens of thousands of dollars in the yellow pages. 
You guys all spend thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in SEO, in pay-per-click, in social media, in the various tools. And so the more you can be on the cutting edge of what's happening with marketing, the more you can understand where things are headed, the better return on investment you can get from those, from those dollars. But I think the biggest reason this session's mission critical right now, the biggest reason you want to know what the future of marketing is, is the opportunity cost of parked trucks. I think most of you guys would say, you know, the big challenge for me isn't getting my phone ringing and, and getting sales. It's finding quality technicians. It's getting those tech, technicians trained up. Hands up if that's true for you. Most of us, right? And so if the marketing paradigm shifts, right? If the strategy start to change and you're not changing with it, what if you wind up with a couple of technicians that you've spent all this time and this energy recruiting, training, and getting ready, wind up in a parked truck, right? That's exactly what we don't want. That's why we're constantly looking at where the, where the puck is going and not where it is, right? That's why we're going to invest some time thinking about the future of marketing. Really, the reality is, if you can't get this dialed in, if you can't remain on the cutting edge of your marketing, you won't keep the phones ringing, the trucks running, and the business booming. So the opportunity, as I see it, really what we're going to unpack in our time here together is we're going to make sure that you're positioned to nail your marketing, right? To really knock it out of the park and be on the cutting edge of what's going on. Have an amazing return on investment, generate plenty of leads to hit your targets and keep the trucks running and really take your business to the next level. So that's why let's, let's dive into it. I want to unpack this model. Hopefully you guys will bear with me because I've got terrible handwriting and I'm going to try and draw this model out for you. And this is where you guys can open your workbooks to page three. And everybody like real quick, I printed these workbooks out for you. Again, I know I like to have something to track along with. So hold this up real quick, everyone. To make sure you have this open up to page three, you've got this accelerated growth model. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this, at least at some level. Really, there's, there's three key things when it comes to your marketing. The first thing is we've got to drive leads, right? We have to drive leads. We have to have people raising their hand. We have to have people scheduling in. We have to have people finding us and, and entering our world. Second to that, we have to maximize conversion, right? We have to not just generate the leads. We need those leads to convert into inquiries. We need those leads to convert into book jobs. We need to, you know, to drive those leads into, into revenue. And then from there, we have to optimize ROI, return on investment. And so on the outer of each of these three key pillars, we have three accelerators. So for driving leads, in my mind, there's organic, there's paid, and then there's database. Organic, that's like showing up in the organic listings in, in, in the search engines. Google Maps, right? It's word of mouth. It's people talking about, you didn't have to spend money necessarily for, for, the, for the lead. It's just organically coming to you, right? We want to constantly be thinking about how do we drive better organic results? Then there's paid, right? That's your Google ads, your local service ads, maybe Facebook ads, YouTube advertising, the paid advertising that you do. And, and then there's database. And I think most contractors, most home service companies, you know, they're really focused on the organic and the paid, but they're not as focused on the database, that's your existing customers using you again. That's your existing customers referring you to their friends. That's your, your, your prospect that submitted a request but didn't convert right then and there. And as I think about the future of marketing, I think about where things are headed, you know, I think a lot of you guys using Chirp are gonna be on the cutting edge because you have the ability to engage with your customers at a different level using email, SMS. And so as I draw this out, and as we think about this model, I want you guys to, to put a little traffic light on the bottom right-hand corner of your workbook. And I don't know if you guys have color pencils. It looks like you have color highlighters there. Like, I want you to rate yourself 
red, yellow, green. Red, you know, this is a problem. This is an area we're not focused on right now. This is an area for improvement. Yellow, eh, gets there, but it could be better. And green, like we're, we're rock solid here. So as it relates to driving leads, you know, maybe organic here, are you coming up? Are you dominant in your local market, right? If you are, that's green, right? It's something you get dialed in. Paid, are you in control of paid? Do you feel like you've got a, a lever that you can easily ratchet up if the, if the phones are slow, right? Is your return on investment from your paid advertising great? If it is, maybe that's green. If it's not, maybe that's yellow, maybe that's red. And then over here in database, are you sending a follow-up after every service call? Are you sending a monthly newsletter? Do you have a mechanism to turn your one-time customer into a repeat buyer that uses you again and again? If not, and again, looking at the future, I think you guys can be on the cutting edge if you really focus on this. And with Chirp, now you've got a great tool to do that in a systematic way. So just a couple of seconds there, rate yourself on those areas. All right, the next is we wanna maximize conversion. And so conversion comes, we're driving traffic to our website. We're driving inbound leads and opportunity. Conversion really happens in three places. Your website, right? Where people land. It happens with your reputation. And then the third for me is automation. I'll talk about this in a minute. Good thing I, I, I put this written out for you guys as well. So why do I say website? Here's the reality, regardless of what marketing you're doing, whether it's SEO or pay-per-click, whether it's YouTube ads, radio advertising, billboards, your customers are gonna wind up on your website at some portion in that journey. They're gonna look at the website and they're gonna see like, is this an authentic company? Is this the kind of company that I wanna work with? They'll make a snap decision on whether they're gonna actually convert into a customer after looking at your website. So you really wanna think, is your website built to convert? And then as we go through the session, I'll be talking about the key elements to improve the conversion rates on your website, the key things you wanna have in place. So is your website really, really built to convert? The next is your reputation, right? We know every single customer, regardless of how they find you, they're gonna to go to your website. And if that passes the stink test, like this looks good, what's the next thing they're gonna do? Reviews, right? They're going to like Tom Jones plumbing reviews. And they're going to want to see like, what are people saying about you? Or you have positive reviews, negative reviews. What's the mix? And so on this front, you guys all know this. This isn't new information. Make sure that you're creating a world-class experience and you've got a systematic approach to build new reviews from your real customers in your real service area, where they're posting on Google. They're posting on Angie's. They're posting on Facebook right? All of us have some type of review automation built into the business today, right? Hands up if you've got review automation. Awesome. Okay. Now the third, and again, if I'm thinking about the future of marketing, where things are headed is automation. That's speed to lead. It's following up with your, your service, your, your inquiries immediately via SMS, via phone. It's having multi-touch, multi-channel communication, which is really, really interesting because Chirp, I didn't realize that we're going to do this session. Chirp does this, right? It gives you that automation that you need to be on the cutting edge, right? This is, if you're thinking about the future, where things are going. If you can put this in place today, you're going to be a year, two years, three years ahead of your competition, right? So same thing here, rate yourself. Red, yellow, green, green on the website. If you feel like it's amazing, if it's built to convert, Maybe yellow on reputation, if you feel like you could be a little more assertive with the review process, probably green for most of you guys. Uh, but maybe the red, the big opportunity that you want to go back and implement after today is your marketing automation. Like get with your, get it in place, get these campaigns going, solve for the speed for leads, solve for the ongoing communication process. And then the third is we want to optimize return on investment. We want to optimize results. And so for me, this breaks down into three key areas. Our first is spend. Right? When we look at our marketing, like we all should have a pretty decent idea. How much are we spending on our website, on our SEO, on our pay-per-click, on our billboard ads, right? Financial mastery, we know how much we spend. But oftentimes the spend needs to be increased. 
like as you look at where you're at right now and where you're looking to go, most contractors want a finite number, right? Okay, I'm spending five grand a month on my marketing. I'm at a you know, million dollars per year. I want to go to $3 million per year. And then they get to 3 million and they're kind of stagnated. And you look back and say, why aren't we moving forward? Where's the momentum? Well, how much are we spending? Have we increased that spend as the business grew? No. So this is the first place to look, right? The, the averages tell us about 5% of, of, your, of your annual revenue invested in, in marketing is about the status quo to stay where you're at, you know, 10 to 15% or more if you wanna see some growth. So this is an easy one, right? How much are we spending in our marketing? Maybe we need to increase on that front. The next one we wanna optimize for is cost per lead. And we wanna know what's our average cost per lead based on service and based on source, right? What's our average cost per lead from local service ads? What's our average cost per lead from our SEO? What's our average cost per lead from the Facebook ads that we're running? And you really want to know that number and you want to be able to optimize around it, right? Sometimes we're spending a lot of money in one channel and the cost per lead's a little bit higher, but the ROI is good. Is it okay to spend more on that channel even if the average cost per lead is high? Absolutely. Absolutely, no doubt. So we want to know. I think a lot of times when I meet with contractors, they know how much they're spending, but they're a little bit fuzzy on what their average cost per lead is per channel. Like you want to put your tracking in place so you can really know at each one of your channel sources, what's the average cost per lead. And then if I'm thinking about the future of marketing, really where it's headed is we need to know our return on investment. We need to know how much did I spend? What's my return on investment? And then based on source, like for my local service ads, what's that ROI? For my Facebook ads, what's that ROI, right? And this for most of us is in the future. Right to this point, we've been doing a lot of tracking where we can say, here's how much I spent, here's my average cost per lead, here's what I think my ROI is. But the future and really where things are headed is if you can get this really tightly integrated with Service Titan, with House Call Pro, with whatever dispatch platform you use, you should be able to, to drill down and know your ROI by source. And by doing that, you can really optimize results because who cares what the average cost per lead is if the return on investment is better from this particular source. So, I mean, really, as you look at, the, as you look at this, you know, red, yellow, green, what's, what's the opportunity? What should you be focusing on next, right? Obviously, could be spend, you got that figured out, but maybe we need to spend a little bit more to get to where we're headed. Average cost per lead, maybe we don't know that yet. Like, if you can't confidently say, I'm spending this amount, and this is my average cost per lead, based on channel, that's a big red. That's something you want to focus on. And then ROI, return on investment, really dialing in those numbers. The better you know your numbers, the, the more explosive you can be with your growth. So I just want to give you guys a couple minutes, go through this model. Hopefully there's a couple of ahas, hopefully there's a couple of takeaways, but really I want you to see what the priority should be for you as you think about how you're driving leads, how you're maximizing the conversion of those leads into book jobs and then how you're optimizing your results. And so for those of you that, that need it on the next page, you have the, the filled in version of that model. Um, so you don't have to try and read my, my chicken scratch up here. All right, so I want to talk now, and I really want you guys to, to work with me on this. So hands up if you're, if you're good to collaboratively think about the future of marketing. Hands up. You guys all said you're going to play all out. Hands up. So I think if we're going to think about the future of marketing, we should also look at the past, right? The past, the present, and the future. So when we think about how you guys generate leads, how you maximize conversion, how you track your return on investment in the past, historically in this industry, right? What was the main thing in the past? Phone book, direct mail. Phone book, direct mail. 
That was the lead generation, right? Because that's where customers were looking. How did you convert in the past? Like when somebody like was ready to convert, how did it happen? Over the phone, exclusively over the phone. And then how did you track, right? If you wanted to see like how much we spent and how's this working, how did you track the results? Excel spreadsheet. Excel, Excel maybe, maybe even pen and paper back in the day. What I want you guys to do is at your tables on page seven in your workbook, I want you to think through what's the present? What's, what's working for you guys collaboratively right now to generate leads, to maximize your conversion and to track your ROI? And then I want you to spend a couple of minutes thinking about where, where it's headed, right? Because there's lots of intelligence in this room. I don't want to just give you all of the answers. I'll share mine after, but I'd love to have you guys have this conversation and really think about this the present and the future that's on page seven in your workbooks. So I'm going to give you guys, uh, let's do five minutes at your tables, five minutes on what you think the present and the future is. Do it on your own and then kind of talk about it at your tables. All right. Good conversation around the present and the future of marketing. So here's what I want to do next. I want to kind of share what I think the present and the future is, and then like kind of add to it, like what you guys came up with at your tables. So I really think the present and kind of what we're seeing work best across the board, we look at marketing and kind of what's working best in, in home services, SEO and, and Google Maps, obviously Google ads, Google local services, remarketing and display, some combination of that suite of services it is just working really well because it's very directional based. Directional meaning their home service, they're in the market, they're looking for you right then and there, and then we're using retargeting to bring them back in. Um, conversion, predominantly still happening over the phone. They got to call into the office and speak to somebody. Um, email, like they'll start a quick conversation via email um, and live chat. Right? Most of you guys have live chat on your website at some level, whether it's home service chat or whether it's Podium or whatever platform happens to be in place. Um, and then from a tracking perspective, we've got phone tracking, we've got analytics, we've got an average cost per lead where we've got some idea on that front. Um, and then usually we're still projecting our return on investment. Like there's a little bit of a gap between, you know, here's how much we spent and here's what I think our return on investment is. Um, really, I think the future and where things are headed um, as it relates to lead generation, and I know there's some resistance to this probably, but Facebook ads, YouTube ads, TikTok, believe it or not, you know, you're, you think TikTok is just for the kids. The average demographic on TikTok is 30 years and over. Um, the highest engaged community is 50 years plus. So it's the fastest growing marketing platform in the history. And what's great about TikTok ads is the cost per impression is extremely low. Right? It's what Facebook was five years ago. So in, you know, in the immediate future, it's a big opportunity to be advertising on TikTok. In terms of conversion, really where things are headed and what you guys want to move away from is exclusively waiting for the phone call or expecting the customer to call in. Like your customer has become trained to schedule their thing right on the internet, right? Right now, if you want to ride from here to dinner tonight, what are you going to do, right? If you don't have a car, you're going to take out your phone, you're going to push a button, and the guy's going to show up and pick you up, right? If you want dinner at the house, you're not calling the office and uh, calling the restaurant and saying, hey, I want to order a steak. You're doing it right from an app, right? Your customers are being trained to operate in that way, and the contractors that give them the opportunity to book right on their website, to have that stuff taken care of immediately are going to win, right? And the technology exists to do this right now. Um, the other thing is the shift to two-way text messaging, right? Your customers, I don't know about you, if you have the opportunity to solve something via a text message versus a live call in any area of life, which one do you choose? Text message, right? We all would prefer to do it via text message. Your customer, if they believed they could solve their plumbing issue by text messaging into your office and getting a couple questions answered and getting it scheduled in, 
will do that. They want to do that. So you need to have a two-way text platform where you can text them, they can text you, you can have a conversation, and Chirply gives you that functionality. So you've got it you know, right here at CEO Warrior. Um, marketing automation, obviously, and then ongoing client communication. The contractors that win aren't just thinking about, I landed the client, and now I'm going to go do the job, and that's that. They're thinking, how do we turn that one-time customer into a repeat buyer, into somebody that uses us again and again, into somebody that refers us to their friends, and somebody that posts reviews about us online, right? And marketing automation, and that's the future. That's where it's headed. I think as it relates to, to your tracking, moving more and more towards real-time ROI, knowing exactly what your cost per lead is, and having pipeline management in place. So, you know, we've looked at the, the past, the present, and the future and where it's headed. Did any of you guys at your, at your tables have anything, especially as it relates to the future, that you're like, here's where I think it's headed that we didn't cover here? Love to, like, hear about that. Quick hand raise if that's you. If not, maybe we've covered it. Yes, come to the, come to the mic. Thanks for being brave. I think online purchasing period, they just go ahead and purchase it straight online as part of the future. Just, and we're going to have to, to I need a new, it. I need a new AC, ma'am. Yeah, exactly. I need a new water here, ma'am. Yep. Uh, transparency with pricing and all of it. Yep. Good share. Anybody else? Did anybody else have anything? So it feels like we've got a pretty good handle on, on this kind of this, this past and this present. So are you okay if we shift this to practical mode now? So it's like, Here's, here's what we're going to put in place to really, in the immediate moment, go back and generate better leads, better sales, better growth in our business. Quick hands up, guys. I just want to keep the engagement going as, as we kind of fly through this. I learn best from example. I learn best from story. And so I just want to share a quick example um, of, of a company that we worked with. Uh, and this is Mark Norman from Shamrock Plumbing, a full service plumbing drain company out in Orlando, Florida, serving the greater Orlando Kissimmee area. Um, and he had grown his business over the years in the yellow pages, right? He had double truck ad, and that was all he needed to do, right? Big ad, relatively large expense, but it generated enough phone calls and enough book jobs to keep him busy, to keep his couple of guys busy. And somewhere along the way, kind of going back now into the early 2010s, that stopped being effective, right? It, the phones just stopped ringing. And, you know, he had to ask himself, where did the customers go? Right, if they're not going to the yellow pages anymore, where are they going? Right, and he found, like all of you guys have, they, they shifted to the internet. Right, they weren't looking at the yellow pages anymore. Now they were looking at Google, they were looking at Yahoo, they were looking on Angie's list. And we know statistically, more than 97% of your customers use the internet in some fashion when they're thinking about hiring your services. And so that begs the question is how do we own the internet in our service area, right? And that was the question that, that Mark was trying to solve for. And so he tried a couple of different things. The first thing he tried was, was YP.com. So the Yellow Pages had served him well over the years. He had a good relationship with his YP sales rep and the YP person said, hey, we can get you online, right? And so he's like, okay, let's, let's give it a whirl. And so he hired YP.com. They put up a very generic templated site. They got it so it came up on YP.com and crickets right right and, and the reason it was crickets was because the website wasn't built to convert right if anyone ever got there there'd be no reason to choose mark versus the competition the other reason was it was just on yp.com people weren't going to that place they were going to google they were going to yahoo right and so back to the drawing board for mark and the next thing he tried was it was a pay-per-click exclusive strategy right the big, the big companies at the time were Reach Local and Yodel, and they say, hey, look, we're going to run paid ads for you, right? And we're going to get you up, and we're going to really make the phones ring, and we're going to track every call. I see a lot of you nodding because this is probably kind of the journey that you've been down. And, and so this actually did work a little bit, right? He was like, okay, I'm getting some leads. I'm getting some calls. But it felt like $5,000 spend, generate eight or $9,000 in revenue, just barely enough to cover the cost of, of doing the service, Right definitely not helping him grow his business. And the issue with this strategy was, you know, they put him into a generic website still. Like it was still a very generic templated website, no reason for someone to choose him. So the conversion was very low, 
But the other reason was it was exclusively dependent on showing up in the paid listings, right? You had to pay for every single lead. You had to pay for every single click. And so it was hard to really get accelerated growth. It's hard to get momentum. And so we were able to put a strategy in place that made sure he was showing up for the most important plumbing keywords in his service area and made sure that the website was built to convert, right? So when someone got there, they chose him and they were like, yes, this is my guy. This is who I want to do business with, right? And so when we look at the search engines, right? We, you guys are all you know, on the cutting edge of this stuff. So this is not new, right? We know we've got the local service ads at the top. We've got the map listings. We've got the paid listings and we've got the organic listings. Really what we needed to tap into for Mark was better organic reach. So we had a blended result. He had the free traffic coming in combined with the paid search, right? We wanna have a blended outcome. We put together a website that was built to convert. And I'm gonna be unpacking like what you can do on your website to improve conversion. It's not about having the prettiest site. It's about having authenticity where somebody can look at it and say, okay, that looks like a solid company. That looks like the kind of company I want to do business with. So we put a website in place that, that converted at a pretty high level. We got them ranked for all of the different keywords in his service area, Orlando plumber, Orlando plumbing, Orlando drain cleaning, Orlando water heater repair, all those different keywords. And then we rolled out what we call our digital dominance method. I'm going to be sharing with you this with you guys, and this is kind of a staged approach on how you want to roll out your online marketing to really dominate and, and maximize your lead flow via the internet. It really starts with organic, then it moves to pay-per-click, then it moves to retargeting, and then it moves to all of the other lead sources you can tap into to really maximize your lead flow. And so historically, kind of going back over the years with Mark, you can see, you know, a $1,600 spend back in the day generated 230 leads on a monthly basis at an average of about $6.97. 2018, 3,000 spend, 497 leads at an average of $6.04. Uh, 2019, 586 leads per month, um, all the way to 2021, the most recent 881 leads tracked on a monthly basis. And so... I don't wanna get into the details on this, but I, I do want you guys to see that is a, a three-time increase in the amount of leads, in the amount of sales year over year, right? And what it meant for him was he was able to grow from a one-man operation doing about you know, $250,000 per year to over $1.5 million in revenue. He was able to expand from one guy to seven guys, really have the confidence that he had a strategy to continue to grow as he grew. Now, I know those numbers aren't large and impressive for a lot of you guys. You guys are doing much bigger numbers than that. But I want you to think about what it would mean for you if you could triple the amount of leads that you can generate, triple the amount of book jobs, and have a scalable model for your marketing. And really, that's what I want to get into here next, is I want to apply this to your business. Um, like I said at the beginning, I, I see how this could be very... Um, very uh, impractical. I want, I want to really make this practical and eyeball for you guys now. And so in your workbooks on page 12, we've got a checklist. And I want to walk you through this checklist so that over the next 45 minutes, you can get really clear on where the gaps are in your current marketing strategy right now and the key things you can go back and implement to double, triple, or even 10x your results. Hands up once you've got page 12 open in your workbook. Awesome. All right, so let's get into this. The, the very first question, the very first thing on this checklist on page 12 is, is your website optimized for conversion? Right? Like I said, your website is the hub. It's the place that everybody's going to wind up before they do business with you. You need to make sure that that website compels somebody to do business with you versus the competition, or it will be leaking the effectiveness of all of the other marketing that you're doing. Yes? You keep on talking about is your website ready, you know, is set up. Step up to the mics. You say that, you, you keep on saying this over and over again. What is that? Give us an example of that. Yeah, let's dive into it. That's what we're going to do right. right now. So here, here's an example of, of a company we worked with, Laney's. Um, they're a plumbing company in Fargo, North Dakota, plumbing, HVAC, electrical. You can see over on the left side, 
kind of a generic website, no personality, no authenticity, no reason for someone to do business with them versus the competition. We rolled out an updated website that was built to convert. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you wanna think about to improve conversion here in a second. Um, and what happened was the amount of leads they generated without improving their rankings, without generating any additional traffic, increased from an average of, so I think it's like 55 leads to over 317 leads extracted because they had traffic getting to the website, but the website was so poor, it was loading so slowly, it had such a low conversion cadence that it didn't generate much by way of results. Um, and you can see here that the same company, 930 leads a month tracked to 1,451 1, leads per month, an average of $1.72 per lead. So how do we optimize for conversion? A couple of things we want to put in place. And this is in your workbooks. I'm not going to try and hit this bullet by bullet, but the number one thing that most contractors miss is that your, your website isn't written to your, your customer avatar. Like th think really clearly about who your ideal customer is. They're a homeowner, right? Usually it's the wife. Usually they're on the higher end of the income scale and they've got a very specific problem they're looking to solve. The plumbing's not working, the AC's not working. They don't care about the technicality of your service. They don't care about the technicality of the system. They care about, are you gonna show up on time? Right? Are you going to honor your commitment to show up? Are you gonna provide a fair price? Are you gonna stand by what you do? And so making sure that the messaging on the website speaks to that customer avatar gonna have a huge distinction. The second thing is to be real and authentic. Oftentimes when I look at home service websites, they look great, they look really pretty, but it's, it's very generic. They're using stock imagery, the picture of the guy with the, with the wrench, right? What we found is using real authentic images, pictures of you, pictures of your team, pictures of the real people in the business makes a huge difference on how well your, your website converts. Leveraging multimedia, having video. Hey, welcome to the website. Here's who we are. Here's what we do. Um, leveraging social proof, showing the online reviews that you have right within your website. Getting the fundamentals in order. And I'm going to show visuals of this, but your phone number in the right-hand corner, very basic. Is it there? Ensuring that there's a web form and multiple forms of conversion, right? Can they fill out a form? Can they book right in? Can they start a chat, right? You want to make it very easy for them to convert in a variety of different ways. And so I'm gonna show some visuals here, but the other thing that's really important is your site speed, right? Pull your website on GT metrics and look, is it showing up quickly, right? That makes a big difference in your conversion. And then having the ability for them to start a two-way conversation via chat, right? If you do not have a chat bubble on your website, you're missing opportunity. Put a chat bubble up on the site. And so I'm gonna have you guys checklist this here in a second, um, but you know, one of the companies we work with is Valley Plumbing based in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, and I just wanna show you the, the conversion rate. So they spend about $9,000 per month in their marketing, an average of 510 leads per month, um, and an average of $18.81 per lead across the spectrum, right? Across all of those different channels. And if you look at this closer, you can see how many come from organic, how many come from pay-per-click, how many come from Google Maps. Um, but I want you to see their conversion rate what specifically you're trying to see there? I want to see the breakdown. The what? The breakdown. Ah. How much does LSA or GT? LSA isn't on here, so we're just looking at organic, pay per click, and Google Maps in this scenario. So there, this website converts from visitor to caller at 35%. And how well your website converts can have a huge, huge impact. And this is something I would really encourage you to track. Like look at the amount of visitors to your site and look at how many of them convert into a call. Did you have a question? So we put call tracking in place. So you'd have a call tracking in place, how many calls came in. Um, and then you look at the, the, the traffic, how many visitors and how many Really, it shouldn't just be by call, right? Because now more and more people are converting via chat. More and more people are converting via form. So it's probably a little bit higher than 30%. But you want to know this number. You want to pay close attention to that because it will make a difference 
and, and really how well your overall marketing converts. Um, I'm gonna kind of hit through these. Just, you know, I'm just showing some examples. Usually I would pull up the website, but I don't have a screen right in front of me here. Um, this is Nixco Plumbing in, in Mason, Ohio. You can see there, $5,879 spend, 535 leads, average of $10.99 per lead, conversion rate of 38%. So I, sh I show this to kind of get the indication that you should know how well your website converts. And on average, I'm seeing it somewhere between 15 and 20%. If you put these elements in place that I've been talking about, you can get that up to north of 30%. And that makes a big difference in how well you're gonna, you're gonna perform all, over time. So the key things, the key elements, and I was kind of hit bullets here, right? Personality and authenticity. It, look at your website right now. Is there a picture of the owner, the people behind the company? If not, that's low hanging fruit, right? People wanna do business with people they know, like, and trust, right? So look at the website. Put a picture of yourself, put a picture of the owner, and you'll see a bump in your conversion rates. Leverage multimedia, right? If a picture's worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million. And you don't have to be super over the top with this. Don't feel like you need to go hire a high end film crew. Your phone has a great camera on it. Shoot a quick video. Hey, welcome to the website. Here's who we are. Here's what we do. Need some help? Give us a call, right? Use multimedia. Showcase your online reviews, have the different components where they can submit a form easily on the website, where they can start a chat, have the phone number in the top right hand corner. Look at the content on your site and like, are you telling them what to do? Like, are you giving them the, the next step action that can make a huge difference? Two way text message, make sure your website's mobile friendly, right? More and more of your customers are getting to the website from their mobile phone, right? This is huge. Make sure that it's super easy to load that they can click a button and call. So now's your turn in your checklist there. Go through this. Ideally on your website, there's at least one or two things you could tweak, one or two things you could update. This is this ultimate online marketing checklist. Go through it, check the ones that you feel are done, good, solid, circle the ones that you need to, you need to work on. This is your time to walk away and build an action plan. Did, it, did that answer your question on what you want to do to have your website built to convert? Did that cover it? Good. Hands up if, if you found at least one thing that you can go back on the website to improve conversion. Excellent. The next question is, is your website coming up in search? Right? Does it actually come up in your service area for the services that you provide. And I talked a little bit about the difference between, you know, the paid results and the organic results. And a lot of times people ask like, does paid search even matter? I mean, does, does SEO even matter at this point with local service ads at the top and then paid ads directly below that and the map listings and everything else moving further and further down the page. And statistics are saying, yes, it absolutely still matters. 71% of the clicks still go to the map and organic listings and 67% go, go to the, the, the listings in the first seven spots. So yes, SEO still matters. Um, as an illustration of this, one of the companies we work with is the Meridian Advantage out in East Lansing, Michigan. And you know, they come up really well on the map and the organic listings. And I'm gonna show you guys some specific things you can do with your SEO strategy to make sure you are coming up organically. But I want you to see here on an $8,000 spend, they're generating about 417 leads per month, which is about $19.32 per lead blended. But I want you to see that the lion's share of those are coming directly from the map and the organic listings, right? 65%. And so if all you did was local service ads, if all you did was pay-per-click, if all you did was focus on paid, you'd be missing out on a large portion of the opportunity. And so, yes, we don't want to just rely on paid search alone. And we don't want to just think about a singular keyword, right? So as an example, like what, what city are you, are you in? Sacramento. And are you plumbing, HVAC, plumbing and HVAC? Electrical. So we wouldn't just do like, Sacramento electrician. We would want to see like Sacramento electrical services, 
electrician near me, right? We would wanna really combine that. Thinking about plumbing specifically, we've got plumbing, plumbers, water heaters, bathroom remodeling, gas line installation repair. Think about all of the different services and all the different things customers are typing in when they need those services. And I believe I included this in, your, in you guys' workbook. In HVAC, we get air conditioning, AC repair, HVAC, all of the different systems that you guys provide. And so how do we make sure we're coming up organically for all of those different key terms? I could talk a lot about this. I don't want to get too into the weeds, right? I want to kind of keep focused on the 80-20 principle, the 20% of the things you can do that will generate 80% of the results. But bottom line, we want to make sure that we've got pages for each of the services we, we provide. We want to make sure that we've got pages for each of the cities that we operate in. And we want to make sure those pages are unique, right? On the website itself. If you do that, you'll be a long ways down the path to ranking well organically for your most important keywords. Usually pull up live, live examples here, but I'm not gonna do that. So what do we mean like on-page optimization? Simplest I can, I can break this down for you. You want pages for each of the services, right? We wanna have our keyword in the title. So this example, this is the plumbing doctor in Arlington and um, Falls Church, Virginia. We wanna have our city and the service in the title, in the H1, and we wanna have great unique content on the website. We wanna have pages for each of those services. We wanna have pages for the cities. So in Sacramento, we don't wanna just have a page for Sacramento plus all of our electrical services, right? We wanna think about what are the, the cities in that 10 mile radius that we service. We wanna create pages specifically for those with unique content, right? By doing that, we can get indexation for all of those different keywords. How many of you guys feel like you've got a pretty tight on-page SEO? Like I know you guys have invested in this over the years, pretty tight. And so sometimes it's not about the on-page. It's really about what's happening off the website that makes all the difference. Did you have a, a question? Yep, so his question was, do we want different sites for each of these subsidies or do we want one site with pages for each? I'm talking about the latter. Yep, you want one main site that's got all your main services that has all of those subsidy pages. It gets a little bit hairy when you start setting up separate domains for all of your stuff. Yeah, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing fine. So really the secret sauce as it relates to, to really moving up in the search results is what happens off the page, right? It's the off-page SEO strategy. And so, you know, we want to have a claimed in Google, my, uh, Google profile listing. We want to have lots of citations, which is just web references of your company's name, address, phone number across the web. Um, we want to build up online reviews. So reviews on Google, reviews on Angie, reviews on Yelp. I know we all hate Yelp, but we have to have reviews that really drives our rankings. We have to build authoritative links back to the homepage, to the service pages and to the city pages. I think this often gets missed, right? We have to be, you or somebody on your team or somebody that you work with has to be doing this work on a consistent basis. Um, and we do something I like to call um, strategic content syndication. So how many of you guys do blogging to your website? Hands up if you do blogging at some, some level, posting a blog on the site every single month. Um, what we found over the years is just doing a blog doesn't really do much to move the needle because it's just more content on your site. What we want to do is take content and put it out via a, a syndication source. And every time we write a blog post, have it draw links and citations back to our website. So we want to be doing strategic content syndication, at least one to two of these on a monthly basis. So every time you create content, it's drawing more and more authority back to your homepage, back to that service page, back to that city page. I'm sorry, bring this back. This one? Right there, yeah. I think right this there. is, if it's not in your workbook, I'll be glad to share this, these slides with you guys. At the end of the day, it, it's really whoever has the most authoritative links 
So not spammy links, and this is old hat SEO. You know, it's just like whoever got the most links won, that started to tank sites, but it's really who's got the most authoritative links. And so tactically speaking, we just want other websites linking back to our website, right? And this doesn't have to be hard. Like you can get this, maybe if CEO Warrior's got a, a member pro, uh, portal and you're listed on there, that, that's a link, right? If you look at your, if you're an electrician and you pass business to the local plumber and vice versa, no reason you can't get that plumber to place a link on their website back to you in a, in a strategic way. Um, think about your suppliers, the places where you buy equipment. You know, ask them, tell, ask them if you can submit an article, ask them if you can submit a case study. Um, I just, this little wheel kind of helps make it practical, the specific things you can do to build up your, your links and your citations. I could talk for hours and hours on SEO, and I know everyone would be bored out of their minds. And so I'm just giving you this checklist. It's in your workbook. Um, these are the basic things you would want to do to really make sure that you've got a good on-page and off-page strategy that will absolutely move the needle in terms of how you rank in the search engines. So that's there. I want you guys to spend a quick sec in the checklist. Now that you've heard high level kind of what the things are, what's the opportunity for you from an optimization perspective? Just kind of go through that checklist. Really want to encourage you, if you take a minute to circle the items or to highlight the items that you need to focus on, maybe it's building better citations. Maybe it's being more aggressive with your link building. Maybe it's finding somebody that you can partner with that can do the SEO for you. Like what's the opportunity to drive better results from your SEO efforts? You guys still with me? Hands up if you're still with me here. Am I going too technical or is this, is this good? Good? Okay, awesome. So the next question really is around paid search, right? Are, are you taking advantage of the paid search opportunities? Um, everything we've talked about to this point really is around the organic, right? Do you have a good website that's built to convert? Do you have good content on your website so it can come up organically? And I really think you wanna have that foundation in place before you're investing heavily in paid search. You know, oftentimes I see contractors inverted. They're spending a ton of money on pay-per-click, local service ads, all of these different paid channels, and they're not taking advantage of the lowest cost, highest quality opportunity, which is the organic traffic. That's really want like you to think about it as a stacked triangle, right? We've got the organic base, and then we add social on top, and then we add paid directories, and we get more aggressive with pay-per-click and things along those lines. So when it comes to paid search, the channels you want to be tapping into the most are local service ads. Hands up if you're running local service ads. Hands up if you're not running local service ads. <laughs> okay, you should be, right? It's, it's like the lowest cost, highest quality lead you can get right now. If you can get in the rotation, there's specific things you can do be in there, be aggressive, get your background checks done. Second to that, you want to be running local Google ads, right? You want to be running Google ads. And if you do this correctly, I'm not going to get super technical, but if you do it correctly, you can really get great results with um, Google pay-per-click advertising. And I'm just going to share a case study in this because I talked with a lot of contractors that have tried pay-per-click in the past and they spent a lot of money and they didn't get a return on investment and they kind of threw in the towel how many of you guys have experienced that? Yeah, a couple. Did you have a question? So his question was on local services, what determines the rotation? And this is a moving target. It's constantly shifting. At first, because there weren't a lot of contractors in there, it was just a matter of getting your background checks done, setting your budget, paying on a per lead basis, and as long as you were early to the game, you were in the rotation and you were winning. Today, because there's so many contractors competing for those three spots, it really comes down to a couple of things. And I have a whole session on this. I probably should have had some, some, some slides about it. But the main things are reviews inside the platform, not like regular Google reviews, but the Google local service ad reviews. 
The second thing is responsiveness to the leads, right? Local service ads is a, is a phone call play. So you're paying on a per lead basis when they call that number. What Google wants is for those calls to be answered and for the problem to be solved for the customer, right? And so the contractors that have somebody going into the platform and marking the outcome, good, bad, or indifferent, talk to this customer, schedule this call, this is what happens, are, are the ones that are winning in the three pack. So it's reviews, it's budget, it's proper setting up the, the account, and then it's closing the loop, like being full, full circle closing the loop in Google local service ads. Yep. Yes. I would just focus on getting the reviews to come straight through the local service platform if they book through there and it's going to help. It's going to move the needle. Yeah. I would still, I would still have somebody going in on the back. I know it's a little bit of a step right now, going in on the back end and pushing the review request through there. Did you have a question or a thought? They're, they're linked and on mine, they're linked by normal Google reviews and, and by, I call yeah. them Yep. Uh, they're linked. I would still, I would still try and push the, the, the native link as well. Yeah, we do, I mean, we do well, even if I don't book the goal. You market as book to go there, Maybe there's a hack right there, right? Whether you book the job or not. Just market, just market book. Was that helpful? Local service ads, how to, how to win with local service ads. Okay, so pay-per-click, when done right, really can be very effective. Uh, one of the companies we work with is Cardinal HVAC out in the Sun Prairie, Wisconsin market. Um, and I just want you to see here, they're, they're predominantly HVAC. They spend about $12,000 per month all in on their, on their marketing. 936 leads tracked on a monthly basis, an average of $12.82 per lead. Now, if we drill down just on the paid search, right? Just on the paid search, which is mainly our, our Google ads, that's a $9,000 investment in Google ads for 224 leads. So an average of $40 per leads from, from paid search, right? In a very competitive market for HVAC, this is a scalable number. Like you can win with leads at this cost per lead. Um, it's just going to show like these are examples of, of campaigns that are, are crushing it, right? It can crush it when you do this right. I think the, the biggest mistake I see contractors and home service companies make with their local, with their, with their Google ads is they're looking at all of the different services, AC repair, AC installation, furnace repair, indoor air quality, whatever, think about the services that you have. And they're just aggregatedly bidding all, all of those keywords and landing it on the homepage of the site, right? And that's really the recipe for, for failure. I know a lot of you guys have done this work and the, the key to get this done well is you gotta think about each one of those different keyword combinations as an ad group. You wanna take those keyword combinations, have a separate ad group with a very specifically written text ad that comes up that's congruent with what they were looking for. And then you wanna drive them to a landing page specifically for that service. Right? And when you do it that way, you're going to have much better relevance for what the person typed, which is going to improve your quality score. What's going to make it so you can pay less on a per click basis. And then your conversion rate, once they get to the page, is going to be higher because it was exactly what they were looking for. And you've got a great page that's got like zero resistance. It's just that thing. And they can either click or submit. And so as you look at paid search, if you didn't run it that way in the past, right? And if you didn't have it dialed in in that way, I would suggest take another look, right? Because it really can be effective. It can really be very, very profitable for you. So just on this section, we're thinking about paid search. Are you taking advantage of these opportunities? Where is the missing opportunity for you? So this question was, what's a good conversion rate for pay-per-click? Um, we look for 25 to 30%. That's what we want to optimize for 25 to 30%. We don't get it in every market, right? You know, certain markets, it's a little bit lower. But if it's not at least 20%, there's room for improvement. So now we've talked about our website and how well it converts. 
Hopefully we find a couple of things there. We talked about showing up organically in the non-paid listings and making sure we're taking advantage of the organic opportunities that are available for us. We looked at Google Maps as well, very, very cursorily. And we talked about paid search, right? The different paid channels that you can be tapping into and really what you wanna be thinking about from an optimization perspective. Uh, the next question here is like, are you active on social media? Like Facebook, Google profile, Twitter, Instagram, like, do you have these profiles? Are you active on them? And most times when I talk with contractors about social media, I say, look, are, you, are, we, are we leveraging? Are we tapping into social media? And they're like, eh, you know, like, how's that gonna help me, right? Why would anybody wanna follow me on social media? And, and there's some truth to that, right? The, the relevance of social media for home services is much different than the relevance than restaurants, right? Like there's a much different play there. With that said, we definitely should be tapping into social media as a mechanism to build authority, to build community awareness, and ultimately drive more repeat and referral business, right? If we can get our real customers to like us on social media, to connect with us on social media, we're gonna remain top of line with them. If we're putting out relevant, timely content, and for the most part, I, I'm all for activity-based content, like when we're just posting something, but authentic content is gonna go much further, right? If you're video, videoing yourself in the field or your technicians are trained to video themselves in the field, hey, we're installing this new thing and here's how it's working and you post that on social media, can you see how that would be much more effective than if you just copy and pasted a, uh, like a basic text with non-useful information. To become the best known contractor in your market, that's what you wanna do. Like you wanna shift from generic social media content to really creating custom content that makes you stand out from the competition. It takes a lot of energy. I think the best way to do it is to get your, get your superstar tech. And we've all got that one tech that likes to be on the limelight right? Hands up if you know who I'm talking about in your business. At least one tech that would be like, yeah, they want to be a superstar. Give that guy, empower him, right? Give him his phone. Have him start taking selfies. Have him start interviewing the customers when in the house. How, how was it? Why did you choose us, right? If you do that, you're going to start to stand out from the competition. And maybe a couple of your techs want to step into that, into that role. The other, the other piece is email marketing. I think this is a big opportunity that most home service companies aren't taking advantage of. Somebody mentioned constant contact earlier. Hands up if you're sending a newsletter at least once a month to your customer base. Some of us are. If you're not, this is low hanging fruit. How much does it cost for you to send out an email blast? Nothing, right? We wanna be sure that we're remaining top of mind with our customer base. They're hearing from us again and again so that they remember us the next time they need that service. So that they refer us to their friend and they remember us when the friend says, hey, do you know a good plumber? Do you know a good AC company? They're like, absolutely. These guys are awesome. And the way you do that is by remaining in their inbox. You know, one of the best examples of this that I can think of is Daniel Cordova Plumbing. He's a, he's a full service plumbing company in uh, West Covina, California. And he grew his business from zero to like one and a half million dollars in, in the first 12 months. And I was like, man, what, like, what, what gives? How did you do that? Like, what, what's working best for you? They said, yeah, you know what? A lot of it was getting the website and being on Yelp in his market. Um, but he said that really the main thing was he took a, a very concerted effort to connect with all of his leads, all of his customers. And everybody, regardless of whether they booked a job or whether they were just an inquiry or they became a customer, got added to his email database. And he started putting out a monthly newsletter, just a conversational check-in newsletter. They said that was one of the key pillars that helped him to remain top of mind, to get more repeat and referral business and to grow his company. And so I just pulled up his numbers here. Um, $7,000 $7, spend, 282 leads, average of $25 per lead in, in West Covina, California. Pretty, pretty competitive market. And so are you taking advantage of email marketing? Like, are you doing this? If not, you get chirp, right? You're going to be able to aggregate all your customer data. You can very easily send in a newsletter out and you can put that in place tomorrow, right? How many of you guys can get an email newsletter out tomorrow to your customer base? Yeah, 100%. So are we active on social media? Are we using that to create better relationships with our customers? Are you getting engagement on social media? 
Um, and are you updating your profiles on a consistent basis? Like do you have somebody that that's their job? Have you assigned that superstar tech that can shoot one or two videos per week for you to really stand out in your marketplace? I have this slide and this whole session that I put together before knowing Chirp was going to do a session on marketing automation. I'm talking about the future of marketing, right? I really think the future is for those contractors that leverage automation and they get ahead of this. And I think this is one of the biggest challenges facing home service companies. It's not about generating more leads. You guys have an abundance of leads in your market, right? It's, it's not that hard to set up SEO, Google local service ads, tap into Thumbtack, have your billboard ads. There's plenty of ways to generate leads and get the phone ringing. I think most contractors aren't converting those leads at a high enough level, right? How many of you agree? Like there, there's a little bit of a distance between the amount of leads that you generate and the amount of those leads that actually convert into book jobs. Hands up. Yeah, 100%. And the reason is, and I don't want to go and belabor the point, but it's exactly what Ryan said from Chirp, 50 to 60% of inbound leads go unconverted. Like they called in and they didn't get an answer or they called in and they, you know, they just weren't ready to book right then and there. And then 90% of web forms don't convert. Like that form where they fill in their name, their email address, because speed to lead is such an important factor, they fill in that form and it's like, that's where leads go to die, right? Because you don't ever follow up quick enough on those opportunities. And so here's the reason, right? Leads that are not followed up within 15 minutes or less go cold. Like if you're not calling them in 15 minutes, they've gone to somebody else, right? And Brian's session showed really in the first three minutes, right? The average customer needs to be followed up with five to seven times. So we can't just answer the phone and book. And I know that's most of the home service companies I deal with are optimized for phone call comes in. Hey, thanks for calling Bill Jones Plumbing. How can we help you? If they don't book right then, there's no follow-up after that. Hands up if that's the case in your business right now. Like you just don't have the time for it. There's no way to chase down all these opportunities. Right. But we know that if they didn't book, we could convert a lion's share of them if we followed up, if we followed through. And the other reason is today's customers really prefer to interact via text message versus the phone. And we're not giving them the opportunity to do that via two way text messaging. And so, really, I think the answer to this problem is to leverage automation. And what's beautiful is you guys have this technology now. You have it baked directly into Service Titan or directly in to House Call Pro, where those unconverted leads can get followed up within two minutes or less. They can get a call, they can get an email, they can get an SMS. And we can put automation in place for those that don't convert, where they're gonna get touched at least five times. And if you guys don't do anything else from today's session, please go back and implement Sure, Go back and put this in place. Hands up if you'll commit to do that for me. This is an amazing thing that CEO Warriors put in, put in your hands to put in place. And so this is a visual, we have a tool called Conversion Amp, um, which, which you know, is very similar, but it doesn't have the integration like Service Titan does. But this is what we want our flow to look like, right? We want our leads to get an immediate text message, an immediate call. And then we wanna have flows that happen based on outcomes. And we can help you guys engineer this inside your Chirp platform. So the question here is, are you leveraging automation in your workbooks? Are we doing this? What's the opportunity? I wanna make sure that you guys are finding the practical outcomes, the practical things that you guys can go back and put in place. So hopefully there's a thing or two here that we can circle and say, look, we don't have this yet. And if we go back and do this, we're gonna make more money tomorrow. And then last but not least is we're looking at our, at our ability to, to grow our home service company. We're looking at how to really be on the cutting edge of our marketing. We have to make sure that we have our, our tracking in place. And the key things we want to track are traffic trends. Right? We all want Google Analytics on our website so we can know how many people got to the website, how long did they stay. This is very easy to set up. We should all have this in place. You should be tracking your rankings. Like You should know how you're coming up in your market for the keywords your customers are typing, right? On Google, especially, on Google Maps, are you in the first spot or are you in the ninth spot, right? You need to know that information. Somebody on your team needs to be monitoring that and making decisions on what new content needs to be written, 
on what new citations need to be built, on what new strategies we can do to move up in the organic listings. Um, we need to absolutely have call tracking in place, right? You need to have every one of your leads call tracked down to the source so that you can see, like I've showed you in all of these different examples, what came from Google Maps, what came from organic, what came from our paid search, right? That way you can optimize your results for what's working best. And then I really think you want to tie that back to your CRM, right? Hands up who's using Service Titan. It seems like most of us use Service Titan, right? Invest the time to set specific marketing numbers that match up inside your system. Get the SEO number, get the pay-per-click number, get the local service ad number so that you're not guessing. You know, you, you can easily see how much you spent. With that tracking in place, you can easily see how many leads were generated, what's the average cost per lead, but that you can also know what your return on investment is down to the service line. And you guys all have it within your reach right now to put that in place with the right, with the right setup. So what do you need to build right now that's going to have the biggest impact on your, on your tracking, on your ability to optimize the results, on the ability to optimize the outcome? See some of you guys writing. I don't want to rush along. I'm going to give you time to, to kind of work through this. So how are we doing? We covered, we covered a lot of grounds. Like we talked about how to drive leads, how to maximize conversion, and then how to optimize our results. We went through this two-page checklist. Hopefully you guys found very specific items, very specific things you can go back and implement. We looked at this accelerated growth model and the key areas where we can truly be on the cutting edge of what's coming next, right? Specifically, thinking about our database reactivation, thinking about how we turn that one-time customer to repeat buyer, how we can leverage automation. Thank you, Chirp, for putting that in place in our, in our lives and, and really focusing on the return on investment, right? Really knowing how much we spent, what our true return on investment is. We looked at the, the past, the present, and the future of marketing and a couple of the key points I want to make sure you take away. Like we, we covered a lot, but a couple of the key things I really want to make sure sit in for you. There's been a shift that has already happened from customers wanting to call in to book their service call to customers wanting to do two-way text messaging, right? Get on the front end of that. Give your customers the ability to text with you directly from your website. You can do that with Chirp. Prospects prefer two-way via SMS. And make sure that you get the ability to capture your social messages as well. Somebody's chatting with you on Facebook, bring that in. Somebody's chatting with you on Google Maps, Google Profile, bring that in. You can have a conversation queue to manage those conversations. I really think the customers that embrace the idea, the, the home service companies that embrace the concept, we don't want to just generate a lead. We want to generate a book job that uses us again and again, becomes a repeat buyer that refers us to others and post reviews about us are the ones that are going to win, right? So you want to be really strategically thinking about how do you create those relationships with your communications with your customers so that over time you can really dominate the market. So the winners are going to be the ones that can convert the one-time buyer to a repeat buyer and our tracking is mission critical, right? If you don't know how much you're spending, what your average cost per lead is, what your true return on investment is, you're gonna be at a disadvantage. And the fact that you're here, the fact that you're doing this work is going to give you that couple of steps ahead. It's gonna give you that, that magic lotto ticket number where you can go claim it in advance, which is what we've done here over the last hour and a half. So with that said, I'd love to give you guys the opportunity to, you know, if you have any questions or if you have any key takeaways that you want to share with the group, would love to hear that. Anybody have any specific questions they want to ask? Key take, if you could just come to the mic, ask the question and share a key takeaway with the group, something that stood out to you. Um, do you separate like the cost per lead source too? Yep. Instead of just, all right. And then um, there's a couple things we're missing, like having videos on the site, having me on the site. Yeah. Um, things like that. I could see helping convert. Little thing, man. You put your face up there. If you don't have it right now, 
you will convert at a higher level. I guarantee it. Pay-per-click tracking confuses me. So when you're, when you're calculating your ROI on your pay-per-click conversions, are you calculating just the leads that are coming across from pay-per-click? Because the way I understand it, you, that lead may be an assisted lead. Maybe it's a pay-per-click lead, but they call you from your website tracking number, but they show the original point of contact was the pay-per-click lead. Is that counted as a pay-per-click lead or does that get counted as being converted on a, a, say a website? Really, I mean, if you've got your tracking set up correctly, you should be able to swap the numbers based on source. So if they clicked on a pay-per-click ad, you should drive them to a dedicated landing page, but there should be a script that, that makes sure that they see a paid number so that you can know like your, your pay-per-clicks being tracked with one number and then your organic, you know, they get there from typing a Google search and clicking on an organic listing, the script would show your SEO number. No, that answers the question, but if you, if you can segment your numbers based on how they got to the website. Right, uh, and I think we can. So when you're showing your conversions here, is that pay-per-click only? Is that going directly through pay-per-click to call in from your pay-per-click yeah. ad? Yeah. Oh, so those are much better numbers they're, than I have. Yeah, they're, they're calling right from their pay-per-click yeah. gotcha. listing. Any other, any other questions, takeaways? Excellent. Well, I hope you guys got value from today's session. I hope you're clear on some things you can go back and implement. It's been my pleasure to, to be here and to share. And so thank you guys for engaging. Thank you for plugging in and remaining completely uh, focused. And with that, we're, we're, we're a wrap. Awesome. Let's give it up for Josh, everybody. Thank you.